Across every major polling website, Harris's numbers have hit all-time highs. Meanwhile, Trump's seem to have slowly but surely fallen behind. From 538 to DDHQ and The Hill, even reaching Polly Market, where it shows her winning 54% to 44%. These are Trump's worst numbers by far this cycle. But if you're a longtime Trump supporter, you're probably used to seeing this by now, and you probably also know that these could be very wrong. In this video, we are filling out a 2024 electoral map, diving into the closest battleground states this election and adjusting their most recent polls for their historical polling errors. There have been some surprising developments, especially in the Rust Belt. And I've got to say, this is probably the closest prediction we've ever made. So be sure to watch the whole video. And let's dive right into it. We are first going to fill out the states with the least amount of competition. For these solid red and blue states, historical trends and recent polls make these generally safe for their respective candidates, and it would take considerable adjustments to change that. Starting off in the West, Trump is guaranteed to win Alaska, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, and Montana. Moving into the Midwest, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska at large, as well as its first and third congressional districts, Kansas, Missouri, and Indiana are expected to be solid red Trump votes. Iowa is also included in this block of red states, even without adjusting for error, according to the most recent poll. The poll from Signal shows Trump leading Biden, who was the candidate at the time, by a margin of plus 12, with 51% to 39%. However, even if Harris polls better here, when we look back at the last three election cycles, 2012, 2016, and 2020, the average error comes out to a whopping plus 4.45 in Trump's favor. Adding 4.45 grows his lead to plus 16.45, but it doesn't change its category, so it is still a solid Republican state. In the South, he is sure to win Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, and South Carolina. Moving on to the states Harris is highly favored to win. In the West, she can count on the Aloha state of Hawaii, as well as Washington, Oregon, and California. And moving east, she is sure to win Illinois and most of the Northeast with Maine's first congressional district, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and the District of Columbia. There are also a few districts we are going to quickly knock out right now since there isn't enough data to apply them to this video. Nebraska's second congressional district is the first of these. The most recent poll shows a tie between the two major candidates at the time, with both of them getting 42%. And Maine's second district also lacks enough data. The most recent poll, however, shows Trump leading by a margin of just plus two against Harris. This makes Nebraska's second district a toss-up and Maine's second district tilt to the Republicans. With only 16 states remaining and Harris in the lead, this is where things start to get really interesting. Just as a quick reminder, the way this works is I calculated the average bias by taking the last polling average from each of these states and cross-referenced them with the actual results from the last three election cycles. By applying this to the most recent averages from these battlegrounds, we can see a potentially more accurate outcome for the election come November. Starting us off is our first battleground state of Nevada. When we look at 538's polling average for Nevada, both candidates are at a perfect tie with 44.4%. Nevada has voted Democrat in four straight elections, going back to Obama's first campaign and continuing through both of Trump's past elections, despite it being considered a battleground. When comparing polling to the actual election results, Nevada shows Democrats being underestimated by polls in both 2012 and 2016, but in 2020, it underestimated Trump. The average of these three comes out to a bias of about plus 0.64 in favor of Republicans. With the current average being a tie, shifting it less than 1% doesn't make a huge difference since it realistically could go to either candidate. Because of this, we have to leave Nevada as a toss-up state. Remember, the margins for our map are 1 to 3% is tilt, 3 to 7% is lean, 7 to 12% is likely, and anything greater than 12% is considered safe. Moving on to our next state, Arizona. Arizona has been historically reliably Republican, 
only voting for the Democratic candidate two times in the last 60 years. It seems to be closer this time around, though, with Biden in 2020 managing to flip this state's votes, but by the second closest margin of the entire election. 538's most recent polling average shows Trump slightly falling, with Harris growing her leading margin to plus 0.9. When looking at the last three elections, polling shows that Republicans were underestimated in both 2012 and 2020, but in 2016, they were overestimated. With this data, the average comes out to about 1.2 in favor of Trump. When we apply this, it pretty much makes this race another tie since he only ends up leading by a margin of plus 0.3. This is another state too close to call, so we can make Arizona our second toss-up state. Next up are Colorado and New Mexico, neighboring states that in the last few elections have seen a steady rise in support for Democrats. As a whole, predictions in these states have been relatively accurate, but surprisingly, polls have, on average, slightly underestimated Democrats. In Colorado, the average error comes out to plus two in favor of Harris. And in New Mexico, the average error from the last three cycles comes out to plus 0.7, also in favor of Harris. Looking back at Colorado, the most recent average from RCP shows Harris ahead of Trump by a margin of plus 6.5. Usually, this would just make Colorado a lean state, but when we adjust it two to the left, Harris wins Colorado by plus 8.5, making it a likely Democrat state. And finishing up the West with New Mexico, things are very similar as to be expected, even though no major polling website has an average for New Mexico. When we look at the last poll from Redfield and Wilton Strategies, we can see Harris leading Trump by a margin of plus seven. Applying our 0.7 adjustment doesn't really change anything here since it can still be labeled as another likely Harris state. Also, Make sure to like and subscribe to join the 3.9% and if you want the most up-to-date election predictions. Okay, now back to our map. Moving into the South is our first state and one of the most important politically in the nation, the Lone Star State of Texas. Texas has a historical voting error underestimating Republicans, mainly influenced by the 2020 election which showed a margin much closer than what it turned out to be. Because of 2020, the average error comes out to about plus 0.8 in favor of Trump. Unfortunately, there haven't been enough polls between Trump and Harris to make an average. However, when looking at the most recent poll, which just came out a few days ago, Trump leads by a margin of plus 7. Just like with New Mexico, applying our adjustment doesn't change a whole lot because Texas keeps its status as a likely Republican state. Next up is Florida, the third most important state in the country politically, just behind Texas. Florida has been pretty unpredictable in the past, especially because not a lot of people thought that it could become as Republican as it has. The average margin of error from the last three cycles comes out to plus 2.4 in favor of Trump, mainly because of how poorly polls in 2020 reflected the actual results. Looking at the most recent polling average from RCP, Trump leads Harris by a margin of plus 6.3. When we add 2.4 to that, Trump wins Florida with plus 8.7, making the Sunshine State likely Republican, putting him back into the lead. Continuing along is our next state, Georgia, which, fun fact, was the closest state of the 2020 election only being decided by a margin of plus 0.24. Looking back at the elections before that, 2012 had Democrats being underestimated compared to 2016, and 2020, which has Republicans being underestimated. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you're a Trump supporter, seeing Trump behind and underestimated in polls is nothing new. Looking at the most recent polling average, Harris just barely took the lead from Trump where it now stands at plus 0.2 in her favor. This margin makes Georgia too close to call yet again even with the adjustment, so we have to leave it as yet another toss-up state. Moving along the East Coast is our pair of states, North Carolina and Virginia. These two have very different histories and very different political trends, especially looking back at how they voted and by what margins in the last several cycles. In North Carolina, the average polling error comes out to plus 2.1 in Trump's favor, mainly from 2016 and 2020. 
And in Virginia, the average polling error is plus 0.2 in Harris's favor, mainly from 2012 and 2016. Looking back at North Carolina, the most recent polling average shows Trump leading by the slimmest margin we've seen yet in this state with plus 0.5. As you already know, this margin is too close to call, but luckily for Trump, applying the plus 2.1 makes his margin a winning plus 2.6. Because of this, North Carolina becomes a tilt Republican state. And in Virginia, the most recent average shows Harris ahead with a margin of plus 2.6. Against Biden, it looked like Trump could have possibly flipped Virginia, but if Harris continues to grow her lead, I wouldn't hold my breath. Adding plus 0.2 makes Virginia a tilt Democrat state with a margin of plus 2.8. Before we look at the Midwest, which has some of the most contested states of the entire election, let's finish up the Northeast. The only two states we have left up here are Maine's statewide contest and New Hampshire, like most states in this region, these tend to favor Democrats. In Maine, polls have overestimated Democratic candidates by an average margin of plus 1.7 over the last three cycles. And in New Hampshire, it's a little better since polls only overestimated them by an average margin of plus one. Maine doesn't have any polling averages as of the making of this video, but the most recent head-to-head -head poll shows what most already expect with Harris leading by a margin of plus nine. When we apply our adjustment, it almost drops it to a lean state, but not quite with plus 7.7. Because of this, Maine at large is a likely Democrat state. And in New Hampshire, which is the better of the two for Trump for sure, especially looking at how close it got in 2016, only voting for Democrats by a margin of plus 0.37. The most recent polling average shows Harris ahead by a margin of plus 5.7. Shifting it to the right one point makes it a closer plus 4.7, but it's not close enough for it to be considered tilt. Because of this, we can lean it in Harris's favor. Trump still barely holds the lead, but this race is neck and neck. And now we get into the really exciting and highly contested region of the nation. The first of these last five states is Minnesota. Minnesota has the longest voting streak in the nation, voting for Democrats for 12 straight elections. The average polling error is plus 1.9 in Trump's favor because he was underestimated in both 2016 and 2020. The most recent average from RCP shows Harris leading with plus 8, which just like in Virginia is much different than what we saw before Biden dropped out. When we shift this plus 8 by 1.9, this usual likely blue state becomes a lean one with a margin of plus 6.1. Next up is Ohio, which is very similar to Iowa politically just with slightly lower margins. The latest polling average shows Trump beating Harris by a margin of plus 11.5. And luckily for Trump, his underestimations were pretty bad in the past, making the polling error the biggest yet with plus 4.7. Because of this, we can make Ohio solid red with an average adjusted margin of plus 16.2. And wrapping up our map are Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. In order for our map to have a definitive outcome, Either candidate has to win all three of these. Looking at each state's polling errors, however, Wisconsin's is a gigantic plus 5.3, Michigan's is plus 2.3, and Pennsylvania's is plus 2.1, all three favoring Trump. Also in all three, Harris's lead has been growing the biggest and the fastest out of all the other battleground states. In Wisconsin, the most recent average shows Harris winning by an impressive margin of plus 3.2. Adjusting this lean blue margin 5.3 points, however, makes it tilt Republican plus 2.1. In Michigan, the most recent polling average shows Harris winning by a similar 2.9 point margin. Adjusting this 2.3 in Trump's favor leaves Michigan as yet another toss-up since its margin ends up being less than 1%. And finally, in Pennsylvania, the most recent average shows Harris ahead with plus 2.3. Shifting this 2.1 makes Pennsylvania's margin plus 0.2, which, just like with all the other toss-ups, could realistically go to either candidate. With that, Trump is closer to winning the election, but with how close everything is right now, neither candidate actually ends up winning. But what do you think will happen? Are polls accurate this time around? Let us know in the comments.